We're going to start right at the very beginning of the service. So we walk up now or wait? Uh, go ahead and walk, uh, walk up now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll start the service. Uh, So I got 30, 31 spaces in the heritage room, yeah. and and where I told him to go ahead and get started right away. Okay, good. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be all right. I hope so. Life, life sometimes has hiccups. Yeah. Good morning. Am I on? All right. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have a couple different events going on today. We have the Hegna celebration. And welcome to all of those who are here early for the celebration. All the Hegnas, raise your hand. We're all over. And we also have the Schmidt gathering, uh, Schmidt and uh, Varpness. All right, raise your hands. We're all over. So welcome to everybody. We're going to begin our service by turning to our opening words. You can find them either on the back of the bulletin or you can just refer to the screen. To all God's beloved who are called to be saints Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do you come to worship today? We come to hear words of hope, for we have all sinned and fall short of God's righteous demands. Many believe that God's, God is against them, that God delights in judging us for our sins. But the good news is just the opposite. Time and again, we are told God is for us, not against us. Indeed, the Holy Spirit promises to intercede for us in accordance with the will of God. What then shall we say in response? If God is for us, who can be against us? No one. God did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. How might we respond? to all that God has done, is doing, and will do for us, what difference will God's goodness make? That's where the therefore comes in. Therefore, we will present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Therefore, having gifts that differ, we will exercise them not for our own benefit, but for the glory of God, for the Lord is generous and merciful to all who call on him. And as we enter into worship, one of the ways that we enter in is, is through holy baptism. We enter in as a, a baptism reminds us that we are dead to our sin and we come alive to Christ Jesus. And so to as we uh, invite the baptism party to come forward, we will be singing the first two verses of Children of the Heavenly Father. Children. 
Children of the Heavenly Father, safely in His bosom gather, nesting bird nor star in heaven, such a refuge e'er was given. I invite you to turn to the baptismal insert that you have received, and please follow along in the service there. Baptism is God's gift to us. Today we celebrate that God has called Atlee Rose Varpness into the family of God. We are born children of Adam, children of a fallen humanity. Through this sacrament, we are born again as children of God into the Christian life through Jesus Christ. Through our new birth, God joins us to the body of Christ, the church. God forgives us and sets us free from the power of sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. God anoints us with the power of the Holy Spirit to empower us for our missionary task to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to, to all people everywhere. And God gives us a new life and fills us with the hope of our resurrection with Jesus Christ. It is God who is at work in our midst in holy baptism. Believing these promises for our child, we present Natalie for baptism. Family and friends and members of the body of Christ, as we receive Atlee in baptism, what will be your part? As brothers and sisters in Christ, we commit ourselves also to be Atlee's sponsors. We promise to provide a nurturing place and to be a welcoming people who will help Atlee grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. We also promise to support Atlee and pray for her in her new life in Christ. So Cheyenne, Damien, Austin, and Hannah, as sponsors, your responsibility is to nurture Atlee in the Christian faith as the Holy Spirit empowers you. You are to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. Do the four of you promise to do this? So, Madison and Ryan, trusting in the grace and the love of God, you have presented Atlee to God for holy baptism. We now ask you to commit yourselves to a sacred promise to God with all of us here as witnesses. Do you promise to live with her among God's faithful people? Do you promise to faithfully bring her to the services of God's house to hear God's word and share in the Lord's Supper? Do you promise to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, and to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer? And do you promise to provide for her instruction in the Christian faith, both at home and in church, so that as a part of God's people, Atlee may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ? Do you promise to fulfill these responsibilities? I do, and I ask God to help us. Please share with us at least life verse. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I now turn to the congregation. To all of us here, I ask you, people of God, to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all of the forces that defy God? 
I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of the that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? I renounce them. I invite you to stand for our confession. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the thanksgiving. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son has carried us to safety and freedom. The floods shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up. For Christ has brought us over the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that Atli may be given new life. Wash away her sin in this cleansing water and bring her forth as an inheritor of your kingdom. Clothe the baptized with Christ and claim your son, sons and daughters no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Ready, Atlee? Atlee Rose, you are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son. and of the Holy Spirit. Just a reminder that in the Orthodox tradition, if they don't cry, it didn't take. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for giving them new birth. Sustain aptly by the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Atlee, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. 
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. you carry that for her? You bear the light for your child until she's old enough to bear it for herself. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Madison and Ryan, the mother and father of this child. Let them ever rejoice in the gift that you have given to them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their child. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their child the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will sing a morning cry, and I will have the congregation sing verses 1 and 4, and then Liz and I will sing verses 2 and 3. Do we have all the verses, Brad? All right. baptism, God has made Atlee a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may joyously proclaim God's praise and go into all the world with the saving word of Christ. We welcome you, Atlee, into the Lord's family. 
and into the mission we share. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, and a worker who joins us in giving thanks and praise to God and in bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. It is my privilege and my honor to present to you the newest member. Sorry about that. I got your fingers caught up in my wire here. All right, let's try that. The newest member of the family of God here at Hawk Creek. She is a child that is ready to receive all of the teachings of God's word. She is a child who will grow up and she will be given gifts by God to share with others. What a privilege, what an honor for us to have Atlee as our newest member, the newest child of God with us today. Remember, as you promised in the service, you are all sponsors. You are all committed to praying for her and to help, help her grow, grow in faith, grow in love in the service of God's kingdom. God bless you, Atlee. God will use you in a mighty way. We will continue our service by singing the last two verses of Children of the Heavenly Father. As a child of the Heavenly Father, we want to bestow upon Atlee a gift from the congregation, a gift from the women, I guess. The women of the, of the church are sharing with you this baby blanket, beautiful baby blanket. So I pray that she will cherish this as a gift for her life. And remember the day that we all pledged to be there in prayer for her. Enjoy. Shall we stand and sing together the gospel, Alleluia.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But what, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We turn to the prayer of the day and pray together. Ever-present God, who is at the side of every creature in creation, you are our help from age to age. Accept our worship, our living sacrifice, and transform us by your Spirit, that being renewed in our lives, we may discern and do your will, what is good and acceptable and perfect, and using your gifts, gladly minister to all the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing together about Jesus and his gift of humble service. You may be seated. Lord, whose love in humble service bore the weight of human need.
hands to show hope and health good will and comfort counsel aid and peace we give that your servants lord in freedom may your mercy know and live let us pray as we worship O lord grant us your vision the vision of your power your power that is revealed and spilled out among us. Help us to take that vision and go with it in our lives. Help us that our lives may reflect the gift of your salvation, the gift of your forgiveness, the gift of a walk with your Holy Spirit through all of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. St. Paul writes, I appeal to you, therefore. Another word is please, right? I appeal to you by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. I appeal to you, therefore, Therefore, a small word, a single word, a conjunction. It's hard to have a therefore without also having the because. Because, therefore. And here Paul takes us all the way back to the very beginning of his letter. For 11 chapters now, Paul has been building his statement about human brokenness and about God's saving work. He started out by telling us that our bodies, yes, our bodies can get us into trouble. That our own attempts at righteousness, starting with our bodies, have failed. And so the standard that God has created is that the person who has God's righteousness by faith shall live. Because if we wait for our own righteousness, we will be waiting forever. In Romans, the fifth chapter, he declared that the righteous person is free from the wrath of God. God is on our side, we said at the beginning of the service, right? In chapter 6, he declares we are freed from sin. Chapter 7, we are freed from the power of the law to condemn us to eternal damnation. In chapter 8, we are freed to live in the Spirit. In chapters 9, through 10, or 9 10, and 11, Paul talked about the righteousness of faith and the promise to Israel. And today, after all of that chain of reason, reasoning, Paul says, therefore, or we might say it in another word, we might say, so what? So what? It's a powerful word. With it, Paul says, here's now the result. Result of all the things that I have shared with you. Because of all that God has done for you, now this is what life in the kingdom of God is going to be all about. And what is that life about? It is our worship. It is our worth -ship. 
where we declare in our lives and in our words and in our deeds that God is worthwhile. My mother told me once about a gentleman who had been regularly visiting their church in Japan. He had been visiting quite regularly, and yet he had never signed up to become a member. So she decided to challenge him. She said to him, when you attend our services without becoming a member, you are looking for a no-risk version of the Christian faith. My mom can be direct. She's German, okay? She tells it like it is. She said to him, what God wants from all of us is for us to offer ourselves to God regularly, day after day. And she said to him, we would love to have you among us offering your gifts in our midst. Well, the gentleman was taken a little back, aback by, by her directness, but it must have struck a chord. Because not too long after that, he, beside, he decided to become a member of the church. And so Paul invites all of us to offer our bodies to God, to offer our mind to God. Not for just an hour of service here in this place, but for hours and hours of service to God continually, moment by moment, day by day, year after year, through our lives, through the gifts that we share. And why are we to do this? St. Paul says, by the mercies of God, I appeal to you. By the mercies of God. So let me summarize for you in a different way. The reason that we can take the risk now to become fully invested in our life with Christ is because the playground bully has lost his power. We are no longer under the authority of the powers of sin that constantly haunt us. Just as Atlee was baptized here this morning and was brought into God's kingdom by God's invitation and by God's call, in the same way God has transformed our situations, our lives, to the point that the powers of sin that once had dominion over us, the powers of sin have lost their power. The bully can't have power over us anymore. We no longer have to be afraid of that bully called sin. Christ has rendered the powers of sin powerless. And that's how we can be fully invested into the life that is now under the control of the Holy Spirit. And where does the Holy Spirit live? But within our hearts. Some would say that we were slaves before, and now we're free. But that's not true. Instead, we have come under new ownership. Before the bully had complete control, he used fear to control our lives. But now Jesus is the one who protects us, living under the umbrella of the protection of the Holy Spirit, the bully can no longer get to us. I think our young people that are going to school can understand this concept very well. 
Did you know that we are most comfortable when we are just like everybody else? Isn't that right? We don't like to stick out like a sore thumb. We don't like to be different. When we do what other people do, then we are accepted. We're in the in-group. But Paul says to us, don't do like what other people do. You have a new owner now. Do as Christ does. And when the Holy Spirit takes over that authority, we start living by a different standard. And so while students, as well as all the rest of us, are driven to be like our peers, those who are willing to live differently will discover that they can survive and will often gain the respect of their peers for their courage, their courage to stand out, their courage to live for Christ. Paul encourages us in our, in our lesson today to be transformed. Transformed. You know what a transformer is, don't you? There are several different kinds of transformers, of course. One kind of transformer is a big cylinder that hangs on an electrical pole that you might find outside your home. Great big round thing that hangs way up high in the air, right? It's called a transformer, and what it does is it, it changes the very high voltages that come from the supply lines into a safer, more usable voltage that we have in our homes. And so the transformer will take that tremendous power that runs through the electrical lines and convert it so that we can run things like toasters and refrigerators, ovens and hair dryers, even cell phone chargers. But to get to the cell phone charger, you get, you, it steps down the voltage even further, right? As transformers, we take God's tremendous power. We take the life-changing power of Jesus' blood on the cross and make it apply to our daily lives. We have no power in ourselves. The minute we become disconnected from God, we have lost our power. The only time that we have God's power, therefore, is when we are connected through Christ to him. Connected through faith. There's another kind of a transformer, too. At a birthday party for a little boy, the most prominent gifts that year were small toys called transformers. Have any of you seen those little toys? Some of you younger people might know what they are, right? Us old folks might not know so well. These ingeniously, ingeniously designed trucks and cars, they can be twisted, they can be pulled and turned in such a way that they can be transformed into planes or robots or pistols or even cassette recorders. Hence the name Transformers. And so at this birthday party, the boys decided to make a game out of converting the cars and the trucks into their hidden identity. And they began swapping the transformers about and racing to see how quickly they could change them. And after one of these races, the youngest boy in the group let out out a sigh of frustration at his inability to change the truck in his hand into a robot. He just couldn't figure out the right combination of twists. Wouldn't you know it, he said. I get a transformer that won't transform. I'd say that that feeling 
can be true for adults too. We recognize a need for change, but we just can't seem to pull it off. We make mistakes and we wonder, how did I get there? How did I get there? We feel like we're losers. We feel like life is happening to us instead of our being in control. Life sometimes doesn't want to transform very well. But Paul gives us a hint. Be transformed, he says, by the renewal of your mind. And that's a great place to start to take our minds and to put into our minds those things that are of God and to, as we receive the things of God, all of the things that are of this world will spill out. We are transformed and we become transformers as we receive the word of God and as that word which has great power comes into our lives, it changes us. It has the power to change us. As Martin Luther said in his, holy, in his catechism, the small catechism, he said, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, through the good news. The Holy Spirit has enlightened me with his gifts and sanctified and kept me in the true faith. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, as we open our lives to the gift of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, our minds can be transformed. And he goes on to explain how this happens. He says, in this Christian church, day after day, he fully forgives my sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give me and all believers in Christ eternal life. He will change me. Therefore, do not be conformed, but be transformed. Paul goes on to tell us how each of us have been given a gift, not for ourselves, not for our own use only, but for the sake of the whole body. Our power comes from God. Our abilities come from God. And therefore, Paul encourages us all to take our gift that God has given and use it to build up the body of Christ. The processional cross that you see here in the front of the church represents that concept. That processional cross over there, the one that we can carry, right? It's made up of all kinds of pieces of stained glass that came from the old church. It came out of the mud, out of the dirt. We found those little pieces and we took those pieces and transformed them into the body of Christ. We are those little pieces, though we are those little shards of glass that are broken. But together, as we come together around the body of Christ, around our Lord Jesus, we become fully the body of Christ, which is the church. God says to us through Paul, give it up. Surrender yourself completely. And so what would happen if every day we surrendered ourselves, our wretched, selfish hearts, our sinful thoughts, our bitterness, our unwillingness to forgive others? What would happen if we offered to God our hands and our feet and our mouths and our ears that they might serve God's purpose. As it's as we let go of ourselves. It's as we let go of our attempts 
to rule our own destinies, that we can begin the journey to total freedom. We are transformed to become transformers. We are renewed in our minds to become renewers of others. And that's why every Sunday when we receive our offering, what is the hymn that we sing? Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. And so, as broken pieces of the body of Christ, as body of Christ together, with all of our unique, special gifts, let us encourage and support each other on this journey. Amen. Let us sing together, We Are All One in Mission, number 576. We continue with the prayers of God's people. To each of our petitions, hear us, O God. Let us respond, saying, Your mercy is great. Confident that God receives our joys and our concerns, we offer our prayers for the church, for those in need, for all of creation. O God of all, we give you thanks for hearing these prayers, for the human family with whom we share this world. We pray for those closest to us and those whose names we will never know. We give you thanks, O God, for this human family, and we ask your help in living that we might live into our identity as your children. 
We pray especially for those suffering the ravages of war and the violent acts of nature. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the world that we share with all creation. We pray for the plants and animals that we see every day and the wilderness we have never seen. We give you thanks and ask your help in living into our identity as stewards of your earth. We pray especially for our farmers already harvesting sugar beets who eagerly await the full, the full harvest that is yet to come. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who are beginning another, another year of learning in school. We pray for our teachers, for the teachers' aides, for administration that is tasked with their care. We pray for our sports teams and their coaches. We pray that you will provide safety in their practice sessions as well as on the track and field. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the ill. We pray, O God, for Russ, for, for all of those who are ill in our family. We pray that you will touch them with your nurture, with your healing and your grace. Teach us to exercise, O God, our motivational gifts as you equip us for service with our ill. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For the gifts that you have shared with us through our loved ones who have been now called to your side, we give you thanks. We pray that you will bless the families of Gunny Knudsen, Janet Hagen, Penny Johnson, Jerry Young. We give you thanks for their lives. We pray that you will now bring comfort and strength to the families as they grieve and as they plan new paths forward. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We thank you for forming us into the church, the body of Christ in the world. Help us to live as he has taught us, loving you, loving our neighbors, unified in Christ, using our varied gifts and skills in the service of ministry until all things are transformed into what is good and acceptable and perfect. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for our leaders, for President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. We pray for Governor Walz, for Senators Amy Klobuchar, Tina Smith, for Representative Michelle Fishbach, for Senators Andrew Lang and Representative Dean Erdahl, for those whose policies we appreciate and those with whom we struggle. We give you thanks and ask that you will be at their side guiding them to act in justice and mercy. For joys and concerns that occupy our thoughts today, those we have spoken aloud and those we ponder inwardly, we give you thanks and we ask that you will be at our side, guiding us moment by moment to recognize that our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We pray all these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have a couple announcements that I would like to highlight. First of all, we will be having services for Jerry Young. Jerry is married to Cindy Anderson, used to be Aldame Anderson's daughter uh, in Rock Valley. His service is going to be held on Wednesday. We grieve the loss 
of Janet Hagen of Rock Valley also. Janet has been a, a member of Rock Valley for, for a long, long time and uh, has shared her gifts in many ways with us. Her funeral ser service is yet uh, to be decided, but please keep her family in your prayers. So first day of Sunday school is going to be on September 10th. The church calendar, I think, had it mistakenly for next Sunday, but we're not quite ready yet. So give us a couple more weeks before we start. Are there other announcements? I know that we have two groups of people that are going to be eating today, and each of you brought your own food items. So we're going to try to work it out so that the, the uh, family, the Schmidt family, the Varpness family can eat first. And uh, we have set up a spot in the heritage room for them, and then the Hegna family will uh, be served uh, after that. All right? Try to make it work out. Any other announcements? Let us receive the offering. my life that I may be consecrated Lord to thee take my moments and my days let them flow in ceaseless praise let us pray Gracious God, we thank you for the measure of faith you have given to each one of us. Increase in us generosity and compassion and prophetic courage so that we may continue to be your body in and for the world. With thanksgiving, we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. And receive now the benediction. Though we are many, Remember that we are one body in Christ and members of one another. Offer your gifts according to the grace given you as a living sacrifice to God. May the, may the Lord who made heaven and earth, the Christ who lived and died for all, and the Spirit who transforms our minds and hearts abide with you and all of God's people now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. You may be seated for the hymn. Let us talents and tongues employ, reaching out with a shout of joy. Bread is broken, the wine is poured. Christ is spoken and heard.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.